the best way to learn how to write safer code is to break bad code. If you're a developer, a manager, or a student, you should try out what we're about to do in this video. In this video, we're going to take the code that I wrote from my last video about how strings are getting people hacked and use a buffer overflow attack to hack into it. Let's get into it. Here we have the code from the video that I made. So pretty simple piece of code. All it does is it prints, hello, welcome to the secure server, and then it checks your password. And if it checks the password correctly, you get to run the debug function, which all that does is give you a shell. So if you know the password, well, easy money, you can just use the password to get in. Um, unfortunately, the is valid password function is a piece of code that we did not get. It's actually in my secrets.c here. All it does is it opens a file password on the computer checks your input against that and if it's right you get in but unfortunately you don't know the password yet there is actually a vulnerability in this function where like I described in my previous video the gets function is what is being used to read the user input gets is an inherently vulnerable function and actually when I compile this program the linker yells at me and says hey like why are you using gets so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play around with the program and see if we can find a way to break into it using the gets function step one we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run the program right and just make sure that it works as intended so welcome to the secure server what is our password uh, we can test out some basic stuff password admin okay so obviously we don't know the password we're not gonna get in this way but like we said before gets is a vulnerable function and we can actually see if we give it too much input at a certain point it starts to break so we'll give it a lot of these guys, wrong password. But if we keep going, eventually we put the program into a weird state. The program segmentation faults and then it core dumps. And we can actually look at this command here, d message, pipe into tail tech n2. A few things are happening here. So we see that the program hacked, the name of our program, our server, crashed. It was a segmentation fault at trying to access this address here interesting we'll talk about that in a second while trying to return to the instruction pointer 4141 4141 so if we go into python 3 and we actually take these 4141s we'll see an interesting concept happens we say bytes dot from hex and give it this string as hex interesting so 4141 4141 is quad a what actually happened here is we gave it so much input that the buffer overflow took control of the instruction pointer on the stack when it tried to return from our password function pretty interesting so can we put a number here that is important to us to give us access to this system the answer is yes we actually can put the address of the debug function onto the stack where the instruction pointer used to be and use that to run this function even though we don't know the password very interesting how do we figure out the address of the debug function well you can look at the source code but the source code doesn't actually have the address of the functions the address of the functions is going to be determined at compile time so we will have to look at the actual compiled binary we do that by going to object dump type an object dump pack d and then do it on our program pipe that into less and we're going to search for the debug function the debug function here is at this address. So it's going to be 08049296. We're going to keep that and stow it away for later in our exploit.py file. So what we're going to do in exploit.py is write a Python exploit that gets us control of that program using a specially crafted input, right? So we're just going to save this as a comment and say this is the debug address. Okay, so now that we know the debug address, in theory, if we control the stack at this location where 41414141 happens then we can put our own address in there and then ret to debug so we need to figure out how many a's do we put in to start controlling our program because you know we put a bunch of a's here but the question is how many a's are our a's right at which what point do we start to control the buffer so we're going to figure that out by kind of guessing uh, we can start the guess with the number of bytes in our buffer we know that our buffer length is 64 bytes so we're going to ask python 3 hey do me a favor and just print a times 64. and we can take that a times 64 and use that as our initial guess at how long we need to make our buffer to get control of the instruction pointer so we'll run the hacked We'll put in the 64 bytes. Okay, nothing's going to happen there. But what we can do is we can put in a series of unique four byte characters to figure out where our control actually happens. We'll go after that 64 bytes, we'll go BBBB, CCCC, and so on 
and go all the way out until F and this will crash the server. What we can do now is we can take this chain. We're going to copy that control C. We're going to say D message pipe detail attack N2. So we got control at four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five, which Python three will tell us was quad E. So we'll take that and we'll put it into our exploit here and say our initial payload is equal to all of these up until but not including quad E. So now that we have that, that means that the next four bytes are going to be our instruction pointers. We'll say that the payload plus equals the bytes of 0804929696, which is the address we got here, which is the debug address we're going to return to debug and don't forget we have to use the um, python reverse notation to flip that because it's 32-bit intel which is a little endian so we'll take that okay so now that we have that we have to first make sure we make this a byte string as well so that python doesn't get mad at us for concatenating a byte string to a string uh, and then also we have to add some additional boilerplate code to make sure that python properly outputs um, by, uh, byte strings so we'll do sys dot standard out dot buffer dot write and we're going to write our payload to the screen so this will actually print out our payload in ascii so we take that and we can use this script to test out if our exploit works we'll do this and you see okay cool we put in our password and we're entering debug mode but it crashes the problem with this is that when we write our exploit this actually closes the file descriptors um, of the shell before we can actually use the shell to do anything cool so what we have to do is we have to say bracket our actual exploit, so python3 exploit.py, and then a semicolon, and then cat. That'll actually keep the file descriptors up, and we pipe all of that into hacked. So now we are in debug mode, and we have a full shell on the system. So we're not root, obviously, uh, but we are. We do have a shell. We bypass the user authentication, and we can use this to cat the password, and boom, what is that? The password is too cool for school. All right, guys, that is it. I've left the source code and the compiled binaries down in the description below. Uh, I would highly suggest go and try this out on your own. And uh, whoa, 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 what's, what's going on? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then and then by the transitive property, stonks only go up. Good. Okay. Oh, hey, I didn't see you guys there. Sorry, don't mind me. Just a scientist triple L trying to figure out the best way for you guys to all learn new topics. Um, if you're interested in that, which you're here, so I'm sure you are, uh, check out this message from our sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing platform for interactively learning STEM topics with over 70 courses ranging from geometry to scientific thinking that are all updated monthly. Whether you're a computer scientist, an artist, or an economist, Brilliant has something cool for you to discover. My favorite part about Brilliant is their interactive examples. Instead of giving you a wall of text to read, every Brilliant lesson is filled with hands-on problems you can use to test your understanding as you go. I personally am taking their Introduction to Neural Networks course right now. Check out this lesson where I learn how neural nets work and allow for the computer to interpret my personal handwriting. It's pretty awesome. You can try Brilliant right now for free and using my link, www.brilliant.org slash low-level learning, the first 200 of you to try it, get 20% off an annual subscription. Thanks again, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video.